Coach, welcome in. Center of Racing here on KQEG TV. I'm Dan Dyker along with Al Losey and the voice, uh, the result of a <laughs> race on Saturday night. Yep. The cold temperatures, a brewer game on Sunday, and then choking on a piece of pizza crust on Sunday night. So oh, the boy. voice is about 60% <laughs> here. But yes, we did get in our first race at the Lacrosse Fairground Speedway. It was the Frostbuster event, and it was cold, but the racing, hot, hot, hot. Oh, it was, and then during the day, the sun was out, so it felt warm, and when the sun went down, yes, it did cool off, but it made for great uh, racing, it made for faster speeds, and a track record. Yeah, we're going to talk about that track record here in a minute. That's what happens when you run qualifying on <laughs> brand new tires. And we had several drivers uh, qualifying under the 22nd mark. First thing, uh, Sean Paff in his Durango Racing number 21 uh, did break the, break the track record that was set, I think it was 2008 uh, by Someone Jay Herbst. Yep. Uh, he set the record with a 19.570, just a tad bit over 100 mile per hour on the uh, new Hoosiers this year. Looking at the other qualifying, uh, these guys were fast. Brad Powell, 19.597. Cole Howell in 19.882. Jay Herbst, 19.938. And a newcomer to the racetrack, 18-year-old Ty Majeski, a 19.976. So congratulations to Sean. Though uh, Sean Paff had to bow out of the feature on right. Saturday night, as did Brad Powell, as uh, they got tangled up uh, between turns three and four. As we go to the video, well, this was a uh, quite the night for Mr. Saturday Night Jay Herbst. Uh, he wanted to come back after missing last year with a fourth place finish and a couple of track championships. Right here, lap three. Well, Al, it was a dogfight between he and Mike Carlson. He, he, it really was. And what was really good about this is that they were both very patient in how they did things. Jay just waited for uh, Mike to make a mistake, and it was just the slightest mistake. And Jay, with his experience, was able to get around him. Well, I think Jay Herbs did what Steve Carlson has done for years. It was a game of cat and mouse. Mm -hmm. He sat back there and started to close in with about seven laps remaining and uh, wanted to pounce while well, he did on, with three to go and then uh, just took off from there. Uh, interestingly enough, Mike Carlson finished second. His father, Steve, finished third, said he had a really good car, uh, had a tire go down earlier in the right. evening, so he had to race in the back twice. Uh, Brent Kirshner took third, you know, last year's track champ, Todd Korish. Uh, they rounded out the top five. As you see, uh, Herbs come here to the checkered flag. Our guest in the program today, uh, we did tape last week, so he didn't know how he was going to race this right. past Saturday night. Uh, Got to give some kudos. Billy Doc Niles will be joining us in the program today. Uh, he recorded his fastest qualifying time in about 17 years yes. and finished sixth. And with a couple Great more laps, could have caught Todd Korish. Yeah, he did excellent. Uh, we were there watching uh, and really cheering him on because he worked so hard, uh, his whole crew. And, oh, it was just so nice to see him running that close to the front. He raced number one, goes to Brent Kirshner, number two to Steve Carlson. Jay Herbst also won the six for six dash. On to the sports when we go. Steve Bachman's number 14 kind of held its own in the mid pack of this one right here. And uh, he battled himself uh, into a corner with Jimmy Crackhorn. Gilster gets by the 33. You're going to see here on the film, he went side by side with a uh, newly revamped Mark Chalet. I think Chalet with his new sponsors in his, both of his sports when at Thunderstock cars this year. Uh, maybe showing something as well, but uh, Bachman just too strong at the end. Yeah, I'd like to call him a young kid, but he's not. He's a he's a hardcore veteran now. He's been out there running up in the front for a number of years now, and uh, as you can see here, once he's out in front, he does not let anybody get near him. Well, I think Bachman's picking up where he left off last year. You know, he mm -hmm. strung together. I think it was four or five weeks of quick time qualifying. Yep. And I kind of wonder how much they didn't do to that sportsman car during the offseason. As you see right here, the field started to catch back up a little bit, but uh, Bachman just too quick in and out of the corners. Mm -hmm. And he starts the season off with a feature win. Uh, the heat race wins went to uh, Brian Hesselberg and Dr. Noise Billy Martin. Qualified Jake Arneson with a 22.092. I like that dirt track wrap he's got on that 37 this year. <laughs> yeah, it does look like more of a dirt track car that you would see because of how wild that wrap is uh, and it's just nice to see all the different uh, paint paint schemes as they come out for the new year. So Steve Bachman starts the season off uh, one for one as we take a break uh, in the schedule this next week. Thunderstocks a very interesting feature we had 18 cars which was fantastic to see 
every driver in the feature except for one was from Sparta. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, this was tough right here. Jason Bolster had to battle the Moore brothers, both front and back. Yeah, the Moore brothers have been out there for such a long time and doing such a great job. And this was really a fun race for us to watch. Uh, it is so fun to see the excitement in the other divisions. Well, you can see Bolster was going inside looking to the outside bumper to bumper and the last the lap right here was quite interesting to watch and call and I think that's when I heard the uh, vocal cords kind of tweak right Snap. there this one was just classic <laughs> uh, Thunderstock racing with the boys from Sparta and uh, congratulations Adam Moore wins over Jason Bolster Andy Moore took third uh, Adam Moore won uh, the uh, the uh, da the uh, quick dash for cash Harley Jankowski got heat race number one bad Brad Worth and got heat race number two now a pair of hoarded features uh, capitalized the end of the night well we did have a couple of uh, uh, novelty races Chris Sampson and Nate right. Towner won the second of the line here we go with the uh, Hornet finish John Petrowski and uh, in his new monkey man uh, 53 right there getting the handles on the car and uh, the very first feature right here went to Jeff Stumlin, who is uh, just fantastic. Matter of fact, first feature, I should say, John Radke, former dirt driver. Understand John may run a full season at lacrosse now in that number seven car coming out of lacrosse. And uh, Jeff Stumlin, you're going to see here in just a moment, uh, he took home feature number two. A lot of Hornets, 35. Yeah, that was for the first night of racing. That was kind of, you can know when, the racers are coming out like that, that they're anxious to get winter over with. As you see, Kim Strong coming out strong right there towards the end of that race. Kim's going to be one to watch uh, as he is each and every year. And if we can roll the second clip right here, we'll show you uh, Jeff Stumlin as there was a lot of activity, bumper to bumper racing in this one here. A lot of paint training going on as well as uh, the man right behind him, Jake Bemis. What a huge fan base he's getting out there, the lacrosse speedway. Yes. Almost got this one. Yeah, he did. It was really, really close on this one. This here had to be another one that took a little tear on your vocal cords. Well, here comes the here we go moment <laughs> in just a moment here is that lap car just uh, I really couldn't help out to Jeff Bemis at all as uh, there was some paint treating going on there. And uh, the last lap wild ride is uh, the car of Jeff Stumlin holds on for victory and this is tough when you go three wide man you better hold on oh yes and uh, there it is right there wow how is that look at that whoa Stumlin. trying to get through <laughs> Stumlin gets spun, so you think Bemis is going to come back and win the race yep. but uh, got a little bit loose himself so uh, May 4th is the next race of the lacrosse speedway it is Whalen weekly series kickoff outlaws will join the three classes you can find the two dollar off coupons if you're 11 and under you get in for free our guest in the program uh, one of our favorites yeah, uh, Billy Doc Niles, the sheriff's going to join us after a sixth place finish at lacrosse. All that and more coming up next on KQE GTV's Seven Rivers Racing. When you're all out of good ideas and you've moved on to the dumb ones, it's time. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, a higher standard of comfort. Sub's cheesesteak. <laughs> it's an Italian cheesesteak and a double cheesesteak. Score! It's another cousin Sub's cheesesteak. It's a Philly. You got the whole set! Ha! I know. Cousin Sub's. Better bread, better subs, better day. I'm so happy. Did you know that the Holman American Legion is open to the public? That's right, seven days a week you can enjoy the full service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the Holman American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the Holman American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. We're back. Seven Rivers Racing here at KQEG TV, along with Al Losey, I'm Dan Diker, coming off a 
Fantastic opening night of races at the lacrosse speedway. The vocal cords are pretty much intact for this year. And it's kind of weird, though, because uh, here we get all excited, and I got my triple cheeseburger down at the lacrosse speedway Saturday night. Yep. Now we've got a little bit of a break because yep. uh, uh, weathering situations and things like that, we're not yep. going to be back at the speedway this Saturday night. Uh, but dirt track racing starts this Friday night at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Myself and Dan Bailey, the announcers up there, so I actually don't get a break. And right. uh, as my guest and I were talking before the program, he was talking with our cameraman of, well, when Diker gets a break in the schedule, we can do some things. And Bill just kind of giggled a little bit because <laughs> I don't have a break now to mid-October. And that leads us into our guest on the program today, late model driver, Billy Doc Niles, the hey, sheriff, Bill. the mid-pack legend, any other nickname you can conjure. He's going to be with us today. Bill, good to have you on. One triple cheeseburger. Who are you trying to kid? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> That was in the pits. They didn't get to see what I had to eat in the grandstands. I'll tell you, the, the pits have the best burgers at the lacrosse speedway. That's why Very I good. triple it up down there. Mm -hmm. You have to admit they're good. Oh, they're awesome. oh I'm not going to deny one bit. Those are the best burgers around or in the, in the pits. They make some good stuff down there. The, the I don't know what it is. They just seem to do things better in the pits. Raceway food is awesome. Yes, it is. It is, and that's I love going to different racetracks. Because oh, yeah. that's, that's like when I, uh, when I do basketball play-by-play -play here in KQEG TV. The first thing I do when we go to the gyms, I scoop out the snack bars. <laughs> oh, when people see you come and they close them. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's why at Osseo Fairchild, they have not only... The biggest snack bar, because it's about the size of four or five kitchens tied into one. They also have big koi fish swimming around in the in the inside foyer of the school. It was closed when we went up there and did a tournament game this year, and I was highly upset. Oh, well, they probably had lasers on them waiting for you to show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Bill Doc Niles coming off uh, opening night at the Lacrosse Speedway, uh, entering or you just have now entered with one race in the books, your 33rd year of racing. Yeah, that's. Hard to believe it's been that long, and uh, ain't got a lot to show for it, but a lot of fun. So, <laughs> it's hard to believe that Lori lets you race that long, yeah. or is that her excuse to get you out of the hair? She does her girl thing. She goes race. and does her girl thing a, a lot lately. Uh, she's got a lot of things planned this summer. I, I think we're probably going to see her in maybe a half a dozen races top. But it's probably uh, wine tasting night. Oh, every Saturday is wine tasting <laughs> night. So, are we going to are we going to get some wine tasting to the track? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we have. I have talked with uh, wine sitters. We are going to have a wine tasting, and we are going to have a blood Mary tasting this summer too with the oh, with the Remedy Bloody Mary mix. Uh, we just got to nail some dates down with them. Uh, <laughs> look, well, I just I just had some meetings with them uh, Friday night. As a matter of fact, uh, they just got to nail some dates down, and when they do, we'll let you know when it's going to be. Two of uh, Billy's biggest <clears throat> sponsors out there, and that right. Remedy is some good stuff. I'm going to tell you that much. You know, one thing I thought was interesting uh, for years on end now, when I get ready to see Bill Niles' car on the racetrack. You're looking for stars and stripes and a red, white, and blue. And you kind of went away from that this year. And you notice when he first walked in the studio, I'm like, you got the wrong shirt on. That's not your red, white, and blue shirt. But he says it's different this year. Yeah, we, uh, we've we spent a lot, of, a lot of time and a lot of money making the cars look good. And it's it's been fun. I, we've had a really good time with all of it. But it was, it was just time to just like... Like I said to uh, Kim Eckelberg and uh, Mike Carlson, who did the lettering and numbering for me, I'm giving you a blank piece of paper. Do with it what you will. Mike did a really awesome job with uh, with the number this year, if you've seen it on Facebook. And I'm sure we'll have some film footage of it here later. And uh, Kim did a really good job of splashing color into the sponsors. So it's not exactly a total plain car, uh, but it still looks nice. You know, that's one of those things that, um, you know, we have so many people at the Speedway that do graphics now i think when i first started at lacrosse um eight nine years ago you only had one or two people that did graphics now everybody does it but when you give somebody a white card say here go at it that gives them a good opportunity to get yep. really creative see that uh, former uh the people who used to letter my car and design it uh, a long time ago i'd give them a plain white car and two days later i'd get this spectacular looking i mean it's unbelievable some of the designs we had back in the Back in the uh, late '90s and early 2000s, um, and now it's you know, it's it's I think it's kind of the point where I've I've kind of burned my ideas out. So for now, we'll just give them a blank piece of paper and let them splash a little color on it and go with that. And maybe if something new hits me, we'll try it out next year. Now I didn't get to see Saturday night during our opener. Are the sheriff lights back? Oh yeah, the sheriff lights okay. are still there. I, I didn't get a chance to see him flash Saturday night. You know, and you know, maybe I'll be so bold here. Maybe I want to heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you did come close to that feature a couple years ago. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of nice to run up front, I discovered, but uh, 
you know, we're just not that consistent. We try. It's not like we don't try, but. But we, you know, there you you did a a lot better last year, and I think you were very comfortable with how your car was sitting up because there were a lot of times last year when I would get ready to announce the the starting lineups for the. Uh, or the feature, you're right up front there. It's uh, we're getting better at our qualifying slightly. Uh, I mean, it, uh, at one point last year, we even you know, turned our, our fastest time, you know, on on record. I mean, I've been in the 19s before in practice, but so has everybody else. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we're 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 getting better. Uh, we got a new car this year, so I'm sure you know uh, if, if I didn't do well starting it, it's because we're still feeling it out. But uh, as most drivers are, as I mean, most drivers Todd Korsh are. has yep. a brand new one. Yep. Uh, uh, Matt England is starting up from scratch. I know Echelbergs were starting from scratch. I mean, there's a lot of guys that have to, have to go and kick the tires that first night and, out. And also, when you're when you're first starting the season too, you got to shake the car down. The weather is not allowing us to shake that car down very often. Right. I know with uh, some of the temperatures we've had and yep. some of the practice sessions we had two weeks ago. Uh, matter of fact, I was talking to Brent Kirshner during open practice here a couple Saturdays ago. He went out and turned 15 laps, came in and, and felt the tires, and they weren't even warm yet. So, mm -hmm. and, and there were old tires, so just one of those adjustments that drivers are going to have to make. But I, I think having this week off now, um, when, we come, when we come back from this break, we're going to ask Billy Doc Niles the same question. You've gone out, you've got your first night in, now you have an entire week off or week and a half off. What kind of adjustments can you make, or does it even give you enough time uh, instead of maybe getting three or four races in. So when we come back from this break, we're going to talk more with our guest, the car 54, where are you? He's right to my right, right to your left, Billy Doc Niles. And we've got more coming up on Seven Rivers Racing here on KQEG TV. Did you know that the home in American Legion is open to the public? That's right, seven days a week you can enjoy the full service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the home in American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the home in American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. Cousin Sub's cheesesteak. <laughs> it's an Italian cheesesteak. And a double cheesesteak. Score! It's another Cousin Sub's cheesesteak. It's a Philly. You got the whole set! <laughs> I know. Cousin Sub's. Better bread, better subs, better day. I'm so happy. We're back one more time. Seven Rivers Racing on KQED TV along with Al Osi. I'm Dan Dyker. Make sure you check out my WKTY Race Report show. New time this year. It's from 1 until 2 on Saturdays. Uh, for the uh, third straight year, Billy Doc Niles, our guest in the program today, has not only kicked off the TV show, but helped me kick off uh, the radio show as well. And uh, we expound on a lot more uh, racing on the race program. Of course, they have a lot more time. And we talked about pretty much every track. Right. Uh, in the state of Wisconsin. Coming off the uh, the Frostbuster event at the Lacrosse Speedway, Bill Doc Niles, just when you get the blood flowing and the juices pumping, we got a break in the action now that, for this next week. That actually fits into my schedule because if there was a race uh, this Saturday night, I was going to end up taking it off. I uh, got a friend's wedding to hit up this Saturday night, so we're going to be hitting that. So everybody gets a chance to go out. We saw some of the rookies. I mean, the Hornets are going to come out full blast with the Outlaws here in, in, on May 4th, the next end of racing. Did you get enough on, on night number one to set the stage for the Bill Doc Niles program this year? Or how many races does it take you to really start dialing things in? Uh, it's, it just depends on how, how we felt in the car Saturday night. Uh, like I said, we've taped this a week early, so I don't know yet. But um, <laughs> it, it, it all depends on how, how it felt. Uh, there's still some changes I want to make to the car, but I want to see what it does first. And then, then I'll make my changes from there. But I'm, I'm pretty confident we went with a base setup, something we've gone with before when we've tried new cars. We're going with a base setup, and uh, and it, it's, it's we built some adjustability into the car. So uh, if I change a spring here or a shock there, things I think things are going to work out fine. So I'm I've, I've kind of planned ahead as to what I think might happen one way or another. There are just so many variables that have come <coughs> into this first week, and I'm so glad we have two weeks. To work on the cars because what happens is is without having the practice time beforehand it basically became a, a shakedown session 
besides that, you're finding out all the, the little tweaks that you gotta do. Plus it's cool out. That means that you're actually gonna get a little bit more horsepower and a little bit more kick out of your motor. And tires. And, and we're all on new tires yes. all, you know, the first two weeks. So that's, uh, there's gonna be a little bit more grip in the track and uh, yep. speeds are gonna be pretty pretty decent right. the first two weeks. You know, and what's funny is that the, the, the speeds are gonna be up a little bit, but the cars may not be perfect. No. <laughs> as we talk about tires, of course, uh, I don't know if folks know by now that <clears throat> Uh, Hoosiers are the tire of choice this year for the sportsman, and again, that was not Chuck Deary's no. making, as some people still don't understand. That's just how it was this year. Well, yeah, to, to, to fully explain it, Goodyear has basically just cut off completely their uh, short track program. It had nothing to do with any of the speedways in this area that, that ran that tire. Goodyear just cut their short track program off completely, left a lot of the promoters holding the bag on what to do. I commend everybody from Chuck to Greg to the guys down at Jefferson and uh, Wisconsin Dells. They all got together, picked some people to do some testing, picked some tires to do some testing, and they all came up with a common tire. So you got to commend all the all the promoters for doing that. That's and a pretty also, cool deal. Now, also with that thing. going on this year, you're going to have sportsmen running the Hoosiers. You're going to have late models running the Hoosiers. And it's not been like that in the past. So you're looking at almost <coughs> the same compound. Does that help or hurt the late models this year? It's just, a different compound. Yeah, it's going to be a different compound. Uh, I don't know how much adjustment the sportsman drivers are going to have to make, but even though we both are on Hoosiers, I mean, uh, there are different compounds. So right. it's it's the, the, the sportsman guys are going into a totally green situation the first night, and it might take them a couple of weeks to get the handle and on their cars. I talked to Justin Mulliken last week, and he said that he knew right off the bat in talking to some folks that had tested those sportsman tires, they're gonna, their speeds are going to be off a tad bit because of that tire this year. Not to take away from the action, because look at what the sportsmen have done the past five or six years. It's been entertaining as all get out. It, it has. And uh, I was in the shop with uh, Greg Sheck and, and, uh, and, his, and his crew chief, Chad, last night. And they were the, the sizes are even different. So they're not sure if they're even going to have to change a gear to accommodate these tires. It's also, like we talked about, like Al talked about earlier, it's all going to be part of the shakedown process the first couple of weeks. And we have to, as late model competitors, deal with what that rubber is going to feel like under our tires yep, too. Definitely. As the whole thing, the whole night shakes out, difference between cold weather and hot weather too as we transition. And, uh, and we've, we've figured out at Oktoberfest a couple of, you know, with all the different compounds, we figured out a couple of spring changes to try uh, to make our car handle better. It might be, you know, with this new Hoosier rubber, that might be something we have to do. It's like I said, it all, it's all part of the shakedown process. Yep. When you got into the car Saturday night, did it feel like it was, it's been 33 years? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, it's, I don't know. I still enjoy getting in the race car. I, you know, I've told you this many times. It's I, I really do enjoy racing. You whether I'm running in fifth place or whether I'm running in fifteenth. You know, uh, I enjoy getting in that race car and running. Uh, no, it doesn't seem like 33 years. The technology has changed. I mean, 33 years ago. I got into a Camaro bucket seat with uh, with just you know two inch straps, <laughs> and and all those pictures showing up on Facebook lately yeah. too of those old old, yeah. those old Camaros. The Camaro bucket seat and the and the open face helmet. I was wearing safety glasses and weld and welding gloves. So, <laughs> and and I was wearing I was wearing a white dress, uh, long sleeve shirt. So that's that's how things have changed in 33 years. You know, to come from that to uh, full face suits, Hans devices. I was uh, say, and, when when and, is and, that? 33 years did you feel the change was about to happen that that the you're going to start getting visors you, you, I mean it, you, it's going to be closed we're talking fire suits we're talking more safety when when could you tell that there was about to be a change to be made in stock car racing it slowly came up through you know through the 90s things started changing uh when I was driving the old street stock class uh it's it started way back then with um you know, with uh, fire suits for the for the all all the classes, and things just kind of evolutionized from there. And I, pr I probably think that the biggest turning point in safety was when Dale Earnhardt was killed at Daytona. Mm -hmm. Then it was the big safety on the enclosed seats, the Hans devices. Uh, uh, you know, everything. It was all about driver safety. You know, with the car tomorrow and the and the big greenhouse that the NASCAR drivers run now. That's uh, the, the turning point had to be when when Earnhardt lost his life at Daytona. Time's ticking backwards on the program here. Before we let Billy Doc Niles go, of course, as we do with other drivers, talk about who helps them stay at that racetrack. And you're uh, 
pretty much loaded with the same folks you've had for quite a while. Yep, uh, All-Star Lanes, uh, once again, what an awesome job. One of our best parties in years we had this year. Don't forget to mark the third Saturday in January of this coming year. That's when our next party is going to be. FMB Trailer Sales and Bernie's Equipment, longtime sponsors out of the Holman area. Love working with Scotty at FMB and Jeff at uh, Bernie's Equipment. Feature Sports Bar and Grill up in Holman. Don't forget that world-famous fish fry on Friday nights. Breakfast on Saturdays and that breakfast buffet on Sunday. And the taco bar that I've been known to destroy <laughs> on Tuesdays. Well, that too. Well, <laughs> why do people even let you into your establishment? I don't get it. Washaw Chiropractic, Dr. Dave. You know, it's all been well documented. He did it. You know, he does a wonderful job on my back, and especially when I had my injury a couple of years ago. The wine sitters up in Holman. You know, we'll love working with Lori and Gordy. You'll find me there on Friday afternoons with my wife, usually having a glass of wine after work. We will have a wine tasting in the pits again this year and we'll let you know when that's going to happen the remedy bloody mary mix love working with john and mitzi they uh come up with this really cool bloody mary mix all the ingredients are in it all you got to do is shake it up add your vodka and you're ready to you know and your condiments and you, you got a bloody mary ready to go lost lake beer is back on with us again matter of fact i just got off phone with joe weiss uh, right before i came on we're solid again turnmire auto repair you know, uh, Paulie and Sue up there in Bangor taking care of my vehicles, making sure I get to the track and all around. Computer Plastics Recycled is my dad's new business up in Holman. Unbelievable stuff they are doing with uh, recycled TV and computer plastic. They're making uh, garden stones. It's really mm -hmm. cool stuff. Computerplasticsrecycled.com, check that out. George and Pat Schmidt, some friends that we bowl with on Friday nights in the winter, just walked up and said, hey, we'd like to, we'd like to help you out a little bit. And Speedy Graphics, Kim, uh, Kim Eckelberg, Wonderful job she does uh, lettering the car, splashing some color on it this year. Can't do it without all these swags. Believe it or not, I'm still talking to a couple others. There is room on the car. Always room. All, yeah, always room. <laughs> love working with all my sponsors. It is so cool that these people love to come back and work with us every year, and uh, and we we do the best we can to try and take care of them, and, and uh, hopefully they enjoy what we do for them. 18 sponsors is the most I've ever had to read during qualifications at the Speedway. And Bill's going to test my uh, how quick I can start from when that when they're on the clock and they come all the way around. I usually have everybody sponsored running out of the way to put me to the test right there. I want to thank uh, Billy Doc Niles for coming on this year. Car 54, going to see him at the Speedway the entire season. And uh, one of the fan favorites, folks, if you get a chance to hop on down and meet him if you haven't had a chance yet. Uh, meet him and Lori because uh, you're not going to find another pair like that uh, that enjoy what's going on at the Speedway and being entertainers whether they win or lose you're still going to see them come back every weekend uh, join us next week more we're going to be taking this week off and then we're really going to set the stage for May 4th as we have the uh, official official hopefully official. summer not buster the summer buster yeah the summer buster we're going to go with that flower buster flower buster flower buster uh, well knowing Chuck we're going to be busting some flower yeah. pots or something out there on May 4th hey this year is all rages for Elsie and Bill Niles I'm Dan Dagger thanks for joining us this is Summer Rivers Racing on KQED TV